Hi, I'm Alistair. I'm a games designer. Now, I've designed board games and video games, but at the moment I mostly create escape room games. And one of the things that attracts me to escape rooms is that they feel more real life than other games. You don't have a virtual inventory because all the in-game objects are right there in front of you. They've got a physical presence with texture and weight. You can pick them up, take them around. And you're literally immersed in the scene, whether you're on a spaceship, in a pirate's cavern or a magical swamp, you're surrounded by the sights and sounds and smells of that environment. You're not just experiencing a digital rendering on a flat monitor in your living room. So I find escape rooms more engaging. They offer more sensory fulfillment. They're more immersive. But here's the funny thing. Even though I've said that escape rooms are more real life, in many ways they're actually more devoid of life than a typical computer game. When you think of games like The Legend of Zelda, Elder Scrolls, Grand Theft Auto, their game worlds are populated with loads of different characters. Some of those characters will be quest givers and interacting with them gives the player a mission that advances the storyline. But even the most basic NPC still adds life to the game world. They go about their little preset activities, they'll deliver lines of dialogue when you talk to them. Even a grunt walking backwards and forwards on a ledge makes a game more dynamic and interesting. Now escape rooms, in contrast, are almost always set in completely uninhabited environments. Sure, there are objects and artefacts and mechanisms that suggest the existence of other people or beings in the world, but you rarely encounter them. Outside of their own teammates, escape room players generally don't interact with any other characters. Now, there are a few exceptions to this. Firstly, there's the Games Master, who first introduces players to the room and also provides hints to guide them as they play through the game. Now, I've always personally preferred escape rooms where both the pre-game briefing and the in-game hint system are delivered in character, with a thematically appropriate method of delivery. And one of the reasons for this is that these are one of the few opportunities that players have for that in-character human interaction within the context of the game. If you're searching for treasure on a sunken ship, I'd always prefer to request hints from a ghost pirate than look at a TV screen for a message typed by Dave, the Games Master outside. Now, some horror rooms also employ live actors in the room, predominantly to just deliver jump scares, but I'm not really counting those as meaningful player interactions. Now, there are some rooms that have character actors in the rooms with which players have to interact, but having played hundreds of escape rooms, I've only encountered this a handful of times. Actors are obviously expensive to employ, and not every player likes the element of forced face-to-face -face social interaction with another human. So, in this video, I'm going to describe some ways to use character-based interaction to add life to escape rooms. And I've got three examples here. They're essentially simple animatronic models. Nothing as complex or expensive to build as the large-scale animatronics you might find at a theme park. But they use a combination of electronics and mechanical movements to create animated characters. So starting off here, I've got a very simple light. And this is just a 12 volt LED bulb. And you can see it uh, glows as I speak, rather like HAL 9000 in uh, the film 2001 A Space Odyssey or uh, the kit car in Knight Rider. Over this side, I've got a parrot. Uh, this was uh, an original toy sold by Hasbro called Squawkers McGraw. Um, but I've modified it so that it can talk on demand. I can also make it blink and perform a few movements there. And here I've got uh, uh, my shy guy, as I call him. And if I knock on the door a few times, hopefully I can wake him up and you'll find him inside. And because he's shy, he's immediately shut the shutter again and disappeared from you. So let me describe these all in a bit more detail for you. So let me start off by describing this shy character here. 
and he's boarded himself up behind this door. Which if I show you the reverse side of, we've got a vibration sensor up here, which is detected by this Arduino. Now, if the correct pattern of knocks on the front of the door is detected by the vibration sensor, this slides this carriage across here, which reveals the hatch in the front, and these are the two eyeballs, which are set to glow from some LEDs behind them. Now, these are all pretty basic parts. There's a NEMA 17 stepper motor here, and the 2020 rail and the carriage are exactly the same as you'd find in a 3D printer or a laser engraver. And the way I came up for the idea for this character was very much based on the limitations of what I thought I was personally capable of creating. I'm not a skilled modeler, and there's no way I could create and animate a, a character this size. So at most, I was only going to be able to show a few body parts, and eyes are the most expressive body parts in any interaction. So I had this idea for just having the eyes peeking through a hole or a slot in something. And where would you find a slot like this? Well, in a door. So I made this door out of some old pallet wood. And rather than kind of plane it down and sand it and varnish it neatly, I thought I'd leave it rough around the edges, which gives it this kind of rustic, slightly amateurish look, which also mirrors my own limited and amateurish woodworking ability. So then, I then had to think about the sort of character that would have a door that looked like that. It's certainly not a creature that cares about outwards appearance or finesse. This looks like a very simple, practical barrier designed to separate themselves from the outside world. So now I was thinking of a kind of a reclusive hermit-like creature, perhaps someone that had rejected society or been rejected by it. This is not a creature that would have a long conversation with the players, but might reluctantly give up a secret if they had to, probably just to make people go away and stop asking them questions. So I had this idea of, of players knocking on the door, the hatch would slide back, and very quickly it would close off again unless players were able to deliver whatever it was that this creature would value or need or something like that. So maybe you have to show them an item, maybe you have to say a password or something like that. Um, now I don't think you need to have a complete detailed backstory for a character that's only going to be involved in a very brief interaction in Escape Room. But I think it adds more depth and just makes for a more rounded experience if you have some sort of narrative surrounding what they're like, why they're there. So besides simply knocking on the door to get their attention, how could players interact with this character in a room? Well, you could use this as a hint delivery system. So if players were stuck in the room, they'd knock on the door, the character would slide back, and the games master through a microphone would deliver a message of what they had to do next in the room. Or maybe you could have a pinhole camera mounted somewhere in the door front here, which the games master was monitoring. So players would have to hold up an item to show to the shy creature behind, and when the Games Master sees the correct item on the camera, they could trigger some sort of event. Perhaps the door opens like this, and players would get to see behind it or, or get some sort of item. Or maybe something could be dropped down a, a slot by the side of the door, or something like that. Now, I did consider an automated response using voice recognition. So players would have to say a kind of a password or something. And I tested out a couple of voice recognition modules to see whether that would work. However, I wasn't totally convinced of the reliability to detect the correct words that players had said, especially accounting for you know other background noises, other players talking and different accents and things like that. So I decided to leave that feature out for now. Perhaps I'll do another video in the future about voice recognition. But essentially, this is a, a manually controlled, we have an automatically controlled reveal of the character. And then what happens next is very much up to you. But I like the idea of something that would be within the frame of reference and ability of that character. So I, I quite like the idea of an item being dropped down a chute. Um, and players will never know any more about the character that has boarded themselves up behind this door here. So this is my next character, and this was originally based on a parrot toy sold by Hasbro. And that toy performed a series of dances and spoke pre-recorded phrases, 
um, but I've modified it slightly. So the first modification I've obviously done is to rip its fur off. And what you could do is you could dye this black if you wanted to style it as a raven or any other bird in fact and still use the same mechanical base. Now in terms of that mechanical base what I've done is I've given it a new spinal column, a new set of nerves which are wired directly to the motors that control the eyelids, the beak, uh, the wings and the legs and they are going to an Arduino down the bottom here. Now I've also made a controller for that Arduino which is based on a Wii Nunchuck controller. So what that means is I can press this button at the top and make the parrot talk. So um, I can also press the joystick here to control the eyes, I can blink them and I can also flap the wings or I can make the parrot move. And I can still make him talk and blink his eyes while he's moving as well. So. Um, what I really like about this is particularly parrots are often found in pirate themed rooms. Pirate is a very popular escape room theme and people naturally want to talk to parrots. You know, they do that in, in zoos as well because you expect to talk to a parrot and it for it to say something back to you. So you could have this parrot controlled remotely by a games master using a controller similar to this or you could have an automated response and program the series of motor movements you wanted to have to respond to the players. But I think it's a, a very natural interaction that would fit in, certainly in a pirate themed room, and like I said you can actually style this as a bird, um, any other sort of bird, and make it fit other rooms as well. If you had a, an Edgar Allan Poe room for example you could have a very creepy um, uh, raven, or you could have an owl in a magic room. Birds are observers they see what's going on and it would totally make sense I think for players to have to speak to one and to get some sort of interaction to it and um, I'll describe the changes I made to this in my uh, github account. Now obviously creating an animatronic parrot is relatively complex both in terms of mechanics and the electronic hardware and also the coding so I also wanted to give an example of what I thought was the simplest dynamic character that players could interact with. And for that I've got this light bulb here. So very simply this is a 12 volt LED bulb and this is being controlled by the GPIO pins output from an Arduino. And all they are doing is they are writing a signal that is turning the light on and off at different brightnesses. Now you can see at the moment it's displaying a kind of a steady pulsating on and off and I wanted this to represent a slow heartbeat. So the fact that it is keeping a steady rhythm, this was associated with sort of a character that's at rest or something like that, this isn't particularly threatening. But you could increase the pulse rate, the speed or in fact the intensity of brightnesses as well to represent different states. Perhaps if this life form whatever it is was feeling unwell you could make the lights dimmer and you'd make the pulse slower. You could also choose to alter this dynamically so as with the parrot what I've got here is I've got a simple switch which I've wired in and if I press that switch as I talk um, I can make the output of the light match whatever I'm saying. So just as um, with the parrot you could use this as a clue delivery system or as any other character in the game that players needed to interact with, you could have the games master have a remote switch like this one. And as they spoke the reply to the players, they also pressed this switch and that would make the light glow. Or you could have a series of pre-recorded responses to the players and you could program the sequence of light flashes that match those responses and just play them back synchronized with each other. It's really very straightforward to do this but I think it's amazingly effective. It's just a light form that players will naturally associate with having some kind of sentence and will attempt to interact with it. So that just about brings me to the end of this video and unlike some of my tutorials this was never designed to be a step-by-step -step guide as to how to create these exact models. It was more ways in which I think that escape rooms can be made more engaging, more dynamic, more full of life 
if they incorporate characters that players interact with, such as these. And I've also tried to demonstrate that those characters don't need to be expensive or complicated. Even something as simple as a light bulb can convey a surprising range of emotions. And if you do want to make something more complicated, perhaps you could consider a shy creature living behind a door in a swamp, or even an animatronic parrot. But as always, I will upload the wiring diagrams and the code for the exact models I'm using here over to my Patreon account, and I'll include a link for that in the description below. If you have any questions or comments about this video, you can always write them below here and I'll do my best to get back to you. And you can always like and subscribe to this channel to be notified of all of my future escape room tutorial projects. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you all very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time. Okay, cheers, bye. Ah.